Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you could take a photograph of cracked paint and use it to create a creepy cracked paint skin look in Photoshop. We're going to do it to three different photographs. First to this one, then to this creepy image, then to this one. Now all four of these images are Adobe stock photos, so I cannot give them to you to work along at home. But at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to use a new feature in Photoshop called Generate Image. With Generate Image, you could create your own photo of cracked paint that you could use on your own images. Now, I mentioned we're going to do this three different times. We're going to start out with this image. I want the skin on her face to look like cracked paint. To do that, go to the cracked paint image and get the Move tool. The Move tool is the very top tool in the tool well. The keyboard shortcut is V as in victory. Click on the paint, drag it up to the tab, put it over her face, and let go. And now we have it there. You can reposition it by just moving it around. You could resize it. You could see it's not fully covering the skin on her face. By hitting Command or Control T to go into free transform mode, when you do that, you'll have handles. Grab the handles and resize it. So it's totally covering her skin on her face. When you're satisfied, click the little check mark at the top. Now, to make it look like she has cracked skin, we need to change the blend mode of this layer. To do that, go to the blend mode drop down, and you can use any of the group that's second from the top. That would be darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color. These seem to work best. You could try some of the others. You might find a couple that work, like overlay looks kind of cool. Soft light looks good. I'm going to go with overlay for this one. Now, once it's there, look very carefully at it. It may be being applied to a spot on her body where you don't want it. For example, it's on her hat. Plus, you could kind of see the outline of that layer as well. It's on, I guess that's her scarf. I don't want it there. It's on her hair. I don't want it there. It's on her eyes. I don't think I want it on her eyes. So we need to remove it from where we don't want it. To do that, we're going to get a mask. Make sure you're still clicked on that layer that has the paint on it. Then go down here and click this little mask icon. So we're adding a mask. The mask is white, so it didn't change anything. To affect change, basically to remove it from where we don't want it, we need to paint in black with a brush. Hit the B key on your keyboard to get a brush. And by the way, on my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have a full list of all of the keyboard shortcuts that are in Photoshop. It's a free PDF that you could download and print at home. In the description below this video, I have a link to my website. You could grab that and all of the other free stuff that I have there. Now, we have our brush. We need the paint in black. So look at the swatch. Make sure that the swatches and make sure that black is the forward swatch. If it isn't, click this little double arrow thing or tap the X key to flip-flop them. Once we have a black brush, go up to the brush settings. Make sure that you're using a round brush and put hardness somewhere in the middle. Make sure opacity and flow are both at 100%. And then change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. Right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller, and just remove it from where you don't want it. And I don't want it on her hat. I don't want it on her hair. And over in here on her hair over here, I don't want it there. And I mentioned I don't want it on her scarf, so I'm going to get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key and make sure that's removed from her scarf. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, we're going to do it a couple more times because I want to show you a couple things that you may run into and how you could fix it if it is an issue. I bet you I didn't want an eye either. I should get a smaller brush and just remove it from her eye as well. I should do it over here as well. Good. Now, let's go to this image, uh, this kind of creepy image. I want to do it here as well. So we're going to go to our paint, and we're going to get the Move tool. Click the V key or click on the Move tool itself in the toolbar. Click on the paint or drag it up to that tab and drop it on this creepy dude's face. We're going to resize it by hitting Command or Control T. We're going to move it up here, and we're going to move it down here. Once you have it th happy that you have it resized and positioned properly, hit the little check mark. Then go over to the blend mode drop down and let's try 
let's try multiply. All right, so I got multiply. And you'll notice that when I resized it, I didn't make it big enough. So it's not all the way covering his chin. It's really not covering all the way up here as well. So you could still resize it. You could still go into free transform no matter what blend mode you're using. So hit command or control T to again go into free transform mode mode, and then resize it as you would like. Then click that check mark when you're satisfied. We're going to add this mask. We're going to again get a brush by hitting the B key. We're going to again be painting in black, get a larger brush, and I want to remove it from like all in here. Now, like in here, and over in here. Now, depending on your monitor, like the brightness level of your monitor, um, it may be in a dark area, what, and you may not notice it on your monitor because you have the brightness on your monitor turned down. And you would share this, let's say, online, and someone is looking at it on a different monitor that's brighter or on their phone that's brighter, and they'll notice cracks where you didn't notice when you were editing the image. So what I suggest you do anywhere that's really dark, even if you don't see the cracks there, make sure you paint in black over those areas so that you're, you're making sure, just doubly making sure that it's not going to be there if someone is looking on, looking at it on a brighter device. I happen to see them on my monitor anyway, so I get to see where I'm painting. But just paint those darker areas just to make sure. Now again, you may not want it on his eyes or you may not want it on his lips. And here I think it looks kind of cool. So I'm going to leave it there. Okay. So we're going to do it one more time to this image and then I'll show you how you could create your own cracked paint. Uh, for this image, again, we're going to go to the cracked paint and I'm going to get the move tool, the V key. Now, actually, um, every now and then, I'll get an email and someone watched one of my videos where I'm using Photoshop in the Move tool and I'm clicking and dragging the image up to a tab and drop it, dropping it on. And they can't get it to do it. It doesn't work for some reason. I think it has something to do with their graphics card. If that is happening to you, you cannot click and drag up to a tab and drop. What you could do instead is copy and paste. So you need to select this entire image by hitting Command or Control A. You'll notice once you do that, you have marching ants going around the entire image. Then hit Command or Control C to copy, copy it to the clipboard. Then go to the image that you want it on and hit Command or Control V, and you just pasted it. Now reposition it. Now for this one, it would probably be better to have this vertical. To do that, again, go into Free Transform mode by hitting Command or Control T. Then right click in the image and then you could rotate it either 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. And then you could come in here and reposition it and grab a handle and resize it so that it's covering all the skin on the person's face and body where you want the cracked effect to show up. Then we're going to go to, well, first we need to click the little check mark. Then we're going to go to the blend modes. And again, for this one, I think I'll use multiply. I want to show you something real quick. Uh, it's in her hair. It's in her eyes. Let's say I don't want it there. Okay. So I'm going to add this mask. So we're going to add the mask. We're going to again, again get a brush, hit the B key. Again, we're going to paint in black. So I'm going to remove it very quickly from where I don't want it. So I don't want it there. Get a smaller brush. No one in her hair at all. Right. So we'll come in here. I don't want it there. All right. I don't want it there. I don't want it on your earring. All right. Now it's all in here. I could just barely see it. So I'm going to get a larger brush and just come in here very quickly. I'd probably do a better job with the smaller brush. And it's probably over here, although I don't see it. But we're going to make sure that we just remove it from all those areas. Now, here's the deal. You're looking at this and you're going, you know, I got this. Here, let me get the move tool so we could better see it. I got this crack right here on her ear and that doesn't look right and then this on her earring it doesn't look right so i want to move this so what you could do is you could get the move tool and you could go to the image so make sure you're not clicked on the mask you're clicked on the actual image and you could move this but what will happen is you'll move the mask with it so if i go this way see what's happening the mask is being moved with it so what you could do i'm going to undo this by hitting command or control z to undo it 
See this little link here? That means they're linked together. If you move one, you're moving the other. So click that little link so they're not linked anymore. Then make sure that you're clicked on the actual image of cracked paint. Then you could come in and you could reposition this better. Now it looks better, although I moved the edge. See over here? So I need to go to free transform mode again by hitting Commander Control T. And then I could go this way and go this way and go that way. So you kind of move it around to get it where you want it. When you're satisfied, again, hit the little check mark. Now the mask didn't move with it, but it, there are some areas that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to hit the brush. I'm going to smaller brush, hit the B key to get the brush, then get a smaller brush by coming in here. And I don't think I want it on her ear at all. Maybe kind of look dumb. Come in here. There. I think that looks all right. All right, so there's just some things you may encounter. Now, I mentioned that all four of these images are Adobe stock images, so I can't give them away. But if you want to work on this, you have some low-key images, some low-key portraits of your own, and you want to do this, but you don't have a photo of cracked paint, you could use this new feature in Photoshop. It's called uh, Generate Image. Now, to do it, you need a blank palette to start with. So to do that, we're going to go up to File. And then we're going to go down to new. Now, what I recommend you do is get something that's around 3000 by 2000 pixels. If you don't have like a preset here, just go over here on the right and put a width of 3000, a height of 2000, resolution 300 is fine, RGB color 8 bit, white for the background contents, sRGB color profile square pixels. So you could just type that in uh, if you don't have a preset over here and then click create. So we have this blank palette. Now, generate image is in the toolbar. It's in the very bottom. But if for some reason your toolbar doesn't have it, it's also in the contextual taskbar right here, generate image. Click on that. Now, by the way, they'll only be active if you have an image here. If you don't have an image here, they won't be active. So that's why we need this blank palette. So click generate image. And in the generate image prompt, type cracked paint. All right. We want a photo, so make sure you click that. Don't use a special effect. Don't use a reference image, unless you have a reference image of cracked paint, but don't use a reference image and click Generate. It will come up with three different examples, but what it's going to give you is color paint. Now, it's been my experience that color paint doesn't work well at all. You could try it uh, and see if it works, but the blend modes will give you unexpected results when it's colored paint, such as this. But you can see what it did. So let's say you like one, like I like this one. So what you need to do is convert this to black and white. To do that, what I recommend you do is duplicate this, this layer by hitting Command or Control J. So where it's on its own layer. Then go up to Image, Adjustments, down to black and white. Now it will give you this black and white image. Now what I recommend you do is you make all the tones brighter. So go to the black and white mix sliders and just start moving them to the right. Don't make them so they're blowing out. Just move them to the right so that you're making stuff brighter. So we had all different colors and you see how that's making it bright. So it's as though it's cracked white paint. Come in here like this. It tends to work better. All right. So when you're satisfied, you have it okay. Click, click okay. Now we need to export this as a JPEG so that we could use it in our images, with our images, like I did with this image. So to do that, uh, go up to File, down to Export, Export As. Go to this dropdown. If it doesn't say J JPEG, make sure it says JPEG. By default, it will have quality at 6. That'll be fine. Do not resize it. Leave the size alone. Metadata none. Basically, don't change anything except for format if it doesn't say JPEG. Click Export. All right. I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it Crack Paint. I'll save it to my desktop. I'll click Save. Now, if you want to save this whole work that you've done here, like the whole, you know, all these layers and everything, then go up to File, then down to Save As. We're going to save it to the, I'm going to save it to the desktop. You can save it anywhere you want. I'm going to call it um, Crack Paint. 
and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file and click Save. Okay, now on my desktop, I have the four Adobe stock images that I worked with in this video, but I also have two other files. I have the crackpaint.psd file. This is the actual uh, file that I did to create the crack paint. But then I have the JPEG file, and this is the file that I'll use in my uh, crack paint technique that I'll be doing to create the crack paint look. And that's it. So that's it. It's kind of a fun thing to do. I kind of like that one the best, maybe. But give it a try and see how it works out for you. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.